Praise the Lord. Can we rise up and pray together? Close your eyes as we pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're very grateful today for bringing us together. Thank you because Jesus Christ, your son, has paid it all. And we are just here to claim what Jesus Christ has done. Nobody is anything here. And we don't want to see anybody. We want to see Christ and Christ alone. We want your Holy Spirit to dominate, to take charge of all the proceedings here today. And Father, I pray, glorify yourself and magnify your son by your spirit in Jesus name. All those who are here inside the auditorium and those who are outside the auditorium, everybody is waiting to receive from you. Lord, I pray that their expectations will not be cut off in Jesus name. I pray, oh Lord, that to let everything change for better for them in Jesus name. Oh Lord God, I stand here asking you to pour your spirit and asking you to pour your power. Let your power descend upon this arena. Let all weakness be taken away. Let the Holy Ghost take ascendancy and take control. Let all forces of darkness bow. Let Satan be sent to jail in the name of Jesus. Father, I know you will do it and you have done it. In Jesus name we pray. And so men and women of God shout it louder. I tell you, you are ready for it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I speak to you today by the grace of God. On a message titled. The Arrows of Deliverance. The Arrows of Deliverance. When we talk about deliverance, many of us think we know the meaning of deliverance. It's a very common word we use, especially in spiritual assemblies. And most of us have been searching for deliverance up and down. We've gone to many places, to churches, and to prayer houses, to mountains, and to hidden places, even to herbalists and so on. We're looking for this experience called deliverance. Actually, it's somebody who is in a problem that seeks for deliverance. Somebody who is not in a problem doesn't seek for deliverance. And so, those who are confronted by situations of life that they couldn't solve, will be looking for solutions. And those who seek for solutions are those who seek for deliverance. Well, let me tell you this from the word of God. What is deliverance? And what does it mean to be delivered? Turn over your Bibles to Luke chapter 1 briefly and let's read the word of God in verses 68 and 69 down to verse 75. Luke chapter 1. Let's read verse 68 up to verse 75. Luke chapter 1 verse 68 says, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. Say amen. amen. God has visited you. That's past things. Before you came here, God was here. And God has visited you and is still visiting you right now to redeem you. In verse 69. And hath raised up an, an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets which have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant the hope which is swear to our father Abraham that he would grant unto us that we've been delivered out of the hand of our enemies finish it might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life here now we see what deliverance is all about you can see that deliverance means to be free from your enemy's captivity and domination anybody who is subjected to his enemy's control devil is your enemy 
Anybody who is subjected or vulnerable to the enemy's control or domination is in bondage and needs deliverance. So deliverance means to be free from your enemy's captivity and, and domination. And the purpose is to be free to live and live your life as planned and proposed by God. God wants to set you free so you can serve him. So you can live your life as he has planned it and proposed it for you. Many people today are not living as God has ordained them to live. Some are just living another man's life. They're not even living their own life. They are, not, they are not where they ought to be. They are not doing what they're supposed to do. They are not experiencing what they're supposed to experience. They, they are just living another person's destiny. It is not their destinies at all. And that is what the Lord God wants to accomplish in you by deliverance. And when he delivers you, you begin to live according to your destiny. And you begin to serve God. From this scripture, see some things there. Number one, deliverance is part of God's covenant with and promise to his people. God has covenanted and he has promised that he is going to deliver his people. Now you wonder why people of God are in bondage. Why people of God are in captivity of the enemy. Yes, all human beings originally in Adam and Eve were people of God. None of us was created by Satan in the beginning. But when human beings fell through Adam and Eve's sin, then the devil took control and we became people of Satan, people of sin, iniquities and transgressions. And so God is saying, I'm going to redeem my people, those who were sold, or those who sold them themselves into sin. And so God says, I'll redeem you and I'll make you to serve me as before. Deliverance is part of God's covenant with a prom promise to his people. God will not allow, God will not suffer his children to languish in chains, in detention. Even you human beings will not want your own son or your own daughter to be languishing in detention in jail. You want to do something to help him out or help her out. The same thing God Almighty, He doesn't want us, His children, to remain perpetually in bondage. And so He wants them out of the captivity of the enemy. Number two, deliverance also is associated with holiness. Because you say here in chapter 1 of Luke that we read the other time, in verse 75, 74 and 75 says that He will grant unto us. That we've been delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear how in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life so you see here now deliverance is associated with holiness the reason why god is setting you free from the captivity of satan from the domination of the enemy is that you may serve him and how do you serve him you serve him in holiness without sin you serve him in righteousness without sin, without rebellion. You serve him in purity without breaking his laws. That's why he sets you free. You see, when you were in bondage to Satan, when you were in bondage under the captivity of the enemy, you couldn't serve the Lord. You tried to serve him by going to church, by walking in your churches, spiritual churches. You walk in there, you sing there, you preach there probably, and you do some other things in the church. But to see, you are not really serving God. Why? Because the essential ingredient of serving God was missing. And that is holiness. If you are serving God in any service you are serving God in, if there is no holiness in your service, then your service is not acceptable. Because the essential ingredient is missing. And God knows that this holiness, this essential ingredient that is missing in your service, is missing because you are still in bondage. And that's why he says, I will deliver you. I set you free from the hands of your enemies. That you may serve me in holiness and righteousness all the days of your life. So you should understand therefore, that those who come to God 
for deliverance as have come today. Those who come to God for, for freedom from any kind of captivity. Captivity of sin, captivity of, uh, of uh, Satan, of sicknesses, whatever kind of bondage you know you are in. Those who come for freedom, for release, for deliverance, must first of all settle the problem of sin. You must settle what? The problem of sin. Deliverance will not come in isolation. This is where many churches miss it in Nigeria. They talk about deliverance, deliverance, and they deceive you. Lay hands on you and the child around you, push you around, and you fall for the that's, that's deliverance. Now you are set free. And the person who falls today goes again, stands up again, and goes straight away into sin. Deliverance is not experienced in isolation. If you are going to be delivered, you must attach your deliverance to holiness. You must have settled issues of sin. And you've given your life to Christ, and you raise up your two hands and say, Lord Jesus Christ, I surrender. When you tell him you surrender, and then he comes to you and takes you out of your captivity, you don't go back into captivity, you keep on following the Lord. That's holiness. But the men in churches, this is not emphasized at all. You just come and pray, lay hands on you, pour oil on you, anointing oil. All those anointing oils that you've been taking. There's no deliverance anywhere if holiness is neglected. I tell you today, anybody who is sinning will stay long in captivity. If you love to sin, get ready. You are going to spend your whole life under Satan's bondage. You will never be free. Because deliverance is not in isolation. Deliverance is yoked. Deliverance is married with holiness, sinlessness, repentance. So when you come to God to be set free from sin, to be set free from any kind of captivity, you must come with repentance. And today, you are coming out. Mm. I say you are coming out. In the name of Jesus. Because you see, when we begin to look at the arrows of deliverance. Arrows of deliverance. When you look at harrow of deliverance and we begin to apply the harrow, every yoke is broken. The doors of Satan's captivity prison will be shattered open. And then all those inmates who have been there, he makes those who have been subjected to life of satanic domination. Those who can move, those who can do what they want to do, can go to where they want to go. Those who are oppressed and surprised and obsessed with demons will be set free in Jesus' name. And you will be set free. I said, you will be set free. And so we look at the word of God closely now as I look at three main things. Three points, three parts to this message. Number one, the repercussion of sin. The repercussion of sin. Number two, the repentance of sinners. Number one, the repercussion of sin. Number two, the repentance of sinners. The number three, the resistance of saints. And that's where you are going to draw the battle line this morning. And the breakfast will serve very hot in point number three. And you are going to be filled and overflowing in Jesus' name. Point number one, the first part, the repercussion of sin. When you talk about deliverance, that's a particular scripture that I love so much. And that scripture showcases what deliverance is all about. Turn about your Bibles with me to Second Kings chapter 13. And you have to put your fingers there because we'll be going back and forth. With that into that reference, Second Kings chapter 13, and let's read from verse 14. Second Kings chapter 13, verse 14. If you find it, say amen. amen. Now Elisha was falling sick of his sickness, whereof he died. And Joash the king of Israel came down unto him. And wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And Elisha said unto him, 
perfect bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, Put thy hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, Open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot. And he shot. And he said, The arrow of Lord's, the Lord's deliverance, and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in Afek, till thou have consumed them. And he said, Take the arrows. And he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, Smite it upon the ground. And he smote thrice and stayed. And the man of God was wroth with him and said, Thou shouldest have smitten five or six times, then as thou smitten Syria till thou hast consumed it. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. Verse 25. And Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, took again out of the hand of Benhadad, the son of Azahel, the cities which he had taken out of the hand of Jehoahaz, his father, by war. Three times the Joash beat him and recovered the cities of Israel. Say Amen. Amen. Here is a king whose life story that I've read here by the grace of God has shown to us what deliverance entails and what is the consequence of being delivered. This king Joash was a king of Israel at his own time and he had a problem. He had had the problem because Syrian army had come to overrule his nation. The Syrian army had encamped a late siege against that nation, Israel. And so the king was afraid, he was terrified. Why? Because he understood that the Syrian army were more in number than his own army. He was outnumbered and he had no weapons to match. And so you remember that he had a prophet in the nation that he could go to. And so he came to Elisha the prophet, weeping and trembling and shaking. And he said, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horseman thereof. That's just a kind of appellation for Elisha. You know, when Elijah was going to heaven, that's what the shout he made when he saw the chariots of fire that came to carry his master, Elijah. He said, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horseman thereof. So whenever you see Elisha and you want to tickle, you want to make him happy, you could just say, good morning, sir. My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horseman thereof. The king tried to be friendly with the prophet of God. But he was in a mess. He knew that the Syrian army were waiting for him outside. And he knew that any moment from now they could just storm his kingdom and destroy everything and take all people into captivity. And so he came to the point, he began to weep. And the man of God said, this is no time to weep. It's time to war. So take bow and arrows. Now you don't need to weep now because the enemies have come around you. Yes, you can weep for your sins. You can weep because of your transgressions. But now that you are coming to repentance, now that you remember that you have a, a, a prophet in the land and you are coming to the Lord, stop weeping, stop crying. Take bow and arrows. And when he took the bow and he took the arrows, he was still not composed. He was not cool. He was not calm. He was not collected. And he couldn't fight spiritual war like that. With desperation and trembling and fidgeting. And you are not composed. You will be defeated. And so the prophet of God laid his hands on the hand of the king. And suddenly there was a transfer of anointing. Today there will be a transfer. And then the king now became cool and calm and collected. And then he said now take the arrows. And those arrows had been there in the corner. Had been there in the corner for a long time. They were just arrows used for something different. Now the king said, the, the prophet said, bring the arrows. Now the arrows were brought. He said, the arrows of the Lord, the arrows of the Lord's deliverance. He pronounced a word of authority on those arrows. And those arrows changed. And they became prophetic tools. And he said, the arrows of the Lord's deliverance. For thou shalt destroy 
Syria, it affected you have consumed them. And so he pronounced it. And he said, now open the window. Open the window that you can see. You know, it's not possible to shoot an arrow through a closed window. So open the window. And when he opened the window and he shot the arrow, he said the arrows of the Lord's deliverance. And after that now, he said she smite it upon the ground. And he smote thrice and stopped. Arrows were still there. Plenty arrows. He only shot two times. Pam, pam, pam and stopped. And the prophet said, what kind of a wasteful fellow are you? What's wrong with you? Your enemies are out there planning to destroy your nation. And now here is God's resources for you to defeat them and destroy them completely. Don't you know a single arrow means a single victory? Can't you just shoot and 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 shoot, and shoot until there will be no more arrows? And when the arrows end or when the arrows finish, then it means the shooting stops. And when shooting stops, the means victory is consummated. Why did you shoot only three times and stop? Okay, it's gone. You cannot save that anymore. You only defeat the Syrians three times and three times. He defeated them. He didn't have a complete conclusive victory at all. Because he stopped midway. He will not stop midway in Jesus' name. No, but the point is this. What brought Joash to this mess what brought him to this kind of humiliating situation the king of Israel could not stand his enemy the army of the Syrian and after the running of fugitive and crying and weeping the son of Abraham can you imagine that unto whom belonged all the promises of God to give them all the land of Canaan and they are there already now they have become they become people that could just be overrun by the Syrians. What brought that? It's a repercussion of sin. Go, go to the Bible again. Second Kings chapter 14. Go up there and let's read. Second Kings chapter 13, sorry. Go up and let's read verse 10. And verse 11. In the 30th and 7th year of Joash, king of Judah, began Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, to reign over Israel in Samaria and reigned how many years? 16 years. Verse 11. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He was an evil man. He was a sinner. He did that which was evil. Those who were sleeping, wake up. Jehoash did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the sons of Nebat, the son of Nebat, who made Israel sin, but he walked very, he was a sinner. And because he was a sinner now, he could not stand before his enemy. He could not stand before his enemy. His enemy came against him, and he, he, he was reduced to a powerless king. What has made you powerless today? You see? How have you come to this mess? your sin why are you so weak now you become subjected to satanic manipulations your sin the witches and wizards now terrify you and they attack your marriage and attack your children attack your family attack your business attack your soul why your sin if you have not got into that kind of situation if you have not put your hands in iniquities and transgressions if you have followed the Lord all the way there is no witch or wizard or familiar spirit that could have tormented your life. But now, see where you find yourself. See can taste sweet in the mouth. But see attracts sorrows in the end. The ultimate, the consequence of sin is sorrows, death, destruction, devastations, destitution nothing comes out of sin in fact the bible says the wages of sin is what is death you will not die in jesus name so he was a bad king and if you look take the scripture very well you see what sins bring to people repercussions of sin look at psalm 107 psalm 107 let's read verse 10 psalm 107 let's read verse 10 psalm 107 Verse 10 says, 
such as sit in darkness under the shadow of death being bound in affliction and iron because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the most high therefore he broke down their heart with labor they fell down and there was none to help you see they fell down there was none to help you looked for helpers you couldn't find any you are falling there was none to help why because you've rebelled against the lord and now you are bound in affliction you are bound in sin and you are bound in sickness you're bound in different kinds of sorrows and negative situations you look for helper in the hospital among your friends among your family members you find nobody to assist you because of your sin move up again to verse 17 verse 17 and 18 fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted fools those are sinners those who said in their hearts there is no god and because of their transgressions and because of their sins iniquities they are afflicted verse 18 their soul abhorred all manner of meat and they draw near unto the gates of death can you see those who are fools are those who say there is no God. They deny God because of their actions. You say, no, I don't say that. I believe in God. Do you? If you believe in God, will you disobey Him? When you see, you deny God's existence. When you go into fornication with your boyfriend, and you close the windows and close the doors, can you close the sky? But in your foolishness, you deny God's existence. You're a fool. That's what the Bible says. When you walk into the theater in the hospital and you abort that pregnancy, you kill that baby because you didn't want it. And if you didn't want it, you wouldn't have gone into fornication in the first place. You deny God's existence. You killed a child that was formed by the authority of God. And God, the Bible says, you deny God, you're a fool. And because of all differences you've committed, you're lying, you're fighting, you're idol worshipping, you're juju, your charms, you're fighting, your anger, you're stealing, you're defrauding people, you're gambling and drinking and smoking and keeping concubines all around. Even though you see go to church and some pastors who are damned, they give you confidence and courage and say, we pray for you. It doesn't matter whatever you do. Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is not your Lord. You deny him by your sins. And because you do that, the Bible says you're fools because of their transgression. And because of their iniquities are what? Afflicted. Affliction comes as a result of sin. And because they were afflicted now, there was no solution. Their soul abhorred all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of hell. Psalm 119, repercussions of sin. Psalm 119, just follow me through the scriptures, the word of God. 119, let's read verse 67. 119 verse 67 says, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Backsliders, that's it. You have left Jesus. Affliction is waiting for you. You left Christ. You shun the word of God. You shun the counsel of the saints in the church. You kicked against your pastor. And then you went ahead. And eloped with that boy, with that girl. And you went into that kind of fraudulent business you're doing around making money. And you say, look now, when I was following Jesus Christ and covering my head and not and going to church and praying and fasting, I was not prosperous. But now, when I left that church where everything is rigid, everything is controlled, I'm now free. Look at me now, I'm prosperous. Wait! It's too early for you to conclude your story. Your conclusion is found in the scripture. Affliction is coming. It says here, before I was afflicted, what happened? I went astray. Repercussion of sin. That's why Joash got into this problem. And he could not stand his enemy anymore. That's why Israel became so humiliated. 
and Syrian forces could come at will and attack the nation because they have sinned against their maker. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23. Repercussion of sin. Don't worry, just follow me through the scriptures. Proverbs chapter 1. Let's quickly read verse 23 to verse 31. Verse 23 says, Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my works unto you. That's gospel preaching. Turn. Come to me. I'll pour my spirit upon you. I'll make you a victor. I'll make you a conqueror. You turn to me. But look at verse 24. Because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at not all my counsel and will none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. Imagine God laughing at you when you are crying. God says because you refuse to obey me and follow my way. I'm going to make a fun of you when you are suffering. God says your cry will provide for me a very good joke. I will just be laughing. Can you imagine that? Is this not opposed to what the pastors preach outside there? And they tell you, it doesn't matter where you are now. It doesn't matter what you're doing now. It doesn't matter anything about your sin now. Just take this oil. Just take this handkerchief. Just take this soap. Everything's going to be alright. God is your friend. God is love. God says, I will laugh at you. When your calamity will come, when witches are tormenting you, it will be an entertainment to me. Can you imagine that? If God Almighty says, I won't even watch, I won't even take care of you, I'll just be laughing. I'll say, Angel, see, see this person crying, which is a wizard, I just destroyed him. He's our destiny. Look at it now. And angels are laughing too. And God is laughing. That means that person becomes eternally hopeless and lost. He says, I will laugh when your calamity will come. Can you imagine that? I will mock when your fear cometh. Verse 27. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, finish it, but I will not answer. Oh, today God will answer your prayers. God says, when they call upon him, you will not answer them. Is this not opposed to what you are hearing elsewhere? Where they tell you it doesn't matter, they don't read the Bible, just one, just two verses, and then you begin to pray. They say, Shout, and you are shouting, and nothing happens. God said, You may shout as long as sins and transgressions are in your life, you remain shouting, you may where you are. Here he's saying, Here, if you look at the word of God, he says, When they call me, but I will not answer, they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. They will wake up early in the morning. They will go to all night prayers in their churches. They pray all night till the next day. God said, you can pray. I will hide my face from you. So bad. Verse 29. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way. And be filled with their own devices. You see, the repercussions of sin. The repercussions of sin. Go to Romans chapter 10. Well, let's, let's go to Proverbs, sorry. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. The same Proverbs 28, verse 9. Many of you know that's a very popular scripture. Proverbs 28. Let's read verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law. What happens? Even his prayer shall be what? Abomination. God says, you don't want to hear the word of God? I'm preaching now. You hate it? Say, this man you are preaching, preaching. Let us pray and go. Have you come here to pray and go without result? Have you come here to just pray? And then you leave this place. And you are going, if you have come like that, I have not come like that. Am I collecting money from you now? You don't collect offerings. Say, we are serious here. So if I prayed at home, prepared myself to come to you, I want result. And I'm not, I don't want to be a failure in God's kingdom. He 
hear the Lord is telling us. He that turned away is here from hearing the law. Even his prayer shall be what? Abomination. God will say, who is that person disturbing my kingdom, my court? His prayer will be an abomination. When you pray, God adds to your problem. God would say, why is he troubling his seed sin? He's not willing to repent. Still with the boyfriend, still with the concubine, still messing around, still going up and down, still drinking and smoking, still gambling, still fighting, divorcing, someone divorced, divorced uh, his wife, divorced her husband, and is still calling upon me. Abomination. God says, shut the door in his face. He can call on me because God has eyes purer than to behold iniquity. And look at verse uh, 13, same chapter 28. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. That thing hit, hit me this morning. I don't know how you react to God's word. He that covereth his sins, he that refuses to confess his sins to God and repent of the same sin, he will not confess to God, even though God knows. He will not repent of the sins. The Bible says, he shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have what? Mercy. Mercy is coming your way this morning in Jesus' name. Your situation is not hopeless. Say amen. If you can do what the Lord wants, and it's so easy. It's so small. It's so simple. If you can just do it, and you just obey. This is not a place where we deceive anybody. We are spending our life on you if you just simply obey and come to Christ and do what he says you should do. Things will turn around in your life in Jesus' name. And then we have some saints here, some Christians here who are saying, we are born again, members of deep life, we are not committing sin, but we still find ourselves in some kinds of captivity. Oh, let me show you something from the scripture. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew 13. I want to move fast now because of our time. Matthew 13. Let's read verse 24. Matthew 13. Verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sold good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. When men slept. Saints. How come you now in the prison yard of the enemy? How come you now have a chronic sickness that doctors can't even diagnose? Saint. How come you are suffering from limitations? How come you discover that you have embargoes in your life? And there's a spell militating against the progress. Say it. Oh, look at what the Bible says. Verse 26. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, this not thou so good seed in thy field, the seed of salvation, sanctification, Holy Ghost baptism, the seed of solutions, and so on. From whence then at it tears? He said unto them, finish it. An enemy had done this. How was he able to do it? When men slept. You slept. Are you still not sleeping now? When you became careless and frivolous, the enemy came and knocked you down. When you allow a crack in your wall of holiness and righteousness, when you allowed a breach in your defense, the enemy just wriggled him through that crack and sowed tears of barrenness, tears of sickness, tears of going down, stagnation, frustration, tears of one calamity after another calamity. The enemy sowed the tears when you slept, but now you are walking. I said, now you are walking. And when you wake up, what do you do? You begin to find. First of all, you repair the breaches. You close the gaps. You close the cracks with the blood of the Lord. We are coming to that. And after that, now you look inward. And begin to pull out the tears of your life. In the name of the Lord. 
and then you are going to be freed instantaneously in Jesus name say it louder amen so brothers and sisters sins attract sorrows defeat disease destitution death and destruction sin doesn't pay well anybody who is sinning is doing himself or herself a great harm the lord will set you free today in jesus name now the second part point number two the repentance of sinners what will you do now look at what that king did go back again to second kings chapter 13 verse 14 second kings let's read chapter 13 and then we we'll read verse 14 second kings 13 verse 14 stay on the story of george now he says in verse 14 now elisha was falling sick of his sickness whereof he died and Joash, the king of israel came down unto him and wept over his face tears of repentance he wept when this king was sinning elisha was in the land he didn't go to him when this king was sinning and kicking against God's laws, the prophet of God was in the land. He would not he didn't mind Elisha. That old man, that old fashioned man, that man just going about and preaching repentance and holiness, just troubling the place and then doing miracle signs and wonder. I don't need him. Everything is going fine with me. But when the enemy came and he was sandwiched between the devil and the blue sea and had no place to run to death, was staring him in the face. And he knew his kingdom had come to abrupt end, except something drastically. He's done quickly now to save him. He remembered, Oh, I have a prophet in the land. I'd rather go to my father. I have a God. Have you remembered that also? I have a God. You've tried herbalist. You tried native doctors. You tried all these false prophets giving you anointing, oil, anointing nonsense. You tried everything you can try. But this morning i want you to remember you have a maker remember you have a god who cannot fail who can disappoint you joe i said i go like the prodigal son the prodigal son came back to his senses when he began to suffer in the string land after wasting away everything he had with riotous living he said i will arise and go back to my father he remembered home remember your home also Remember your maker? You didn't create yourself. God created you. Why don't you come back to him? In holiness and righteousness and repentance. This man came. King was weeping. Some people are too big to cry. You need to see when, I, when I'm praying sometimes. To weep before the Lord. To cry. To shed tears and say, oh God. Because you are cornered. You have no helper anywhere. And he said, my father, my father, Elisha was sick. The only hope I have, you too, you are sick and you are about to die. Hey, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the husband thereof. Wake up, Elisha, do this one assignment for me before you go. I'm coming. Did you pray like that? Did you pray with desperation? Somebody who has who's cornered and say, oh God, nothing I bring. I'm finished. I'm naked. No hope anywhere. If you abandon me right now, I die. If you abandon me right now, I'll be destroyed. The witches and wizards are all around me. My destiny is mutilated and the body manipulated and have no hope anywhere now. Everything is upside down for me. But if you can do something, are you weep before the Lord? The king wept. King wept. And is weeping brought wonder let me tell you something today go and learn how to weep don't listen to those who tell you smile jesus loves you a sinner has no business with smiling or laughing somebody is going to jail can he be smiling except his brain is not functioning well somebody is going to face firing squad it's about to be executed Will he be smiling and laughing on his way to death? Nobody does that. The sinner is on his way to hell and he's just saying, smile. In some churches, they smile, they smile. Jesus loves you. We don't talk like that here. We tell sinners to weep and cry and repent. This man repented here and he wept 
my father, my father, the child of Israel and the horseman thereof. And Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows. Take bow and arrows. And what he did after that, he took bow. He also uh, took arrows. Let's go on to um, Psalm 107. Repentance of sinners. Psalm 107. Repentance of sinners. And let's read verse 10. Psalm 107. Let's read verse 10. Repentance of sinners. You see what happened here when they repented. 107 verse 10. Verse 10 says, Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. What happened to them in verse 12? Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. What did they do, brothers and sisters? Verse 13. Then they did what? Uh -huh. When the king wept the other time, I told you. Here now, see. Then they cried unto whom? Many sinners will go and cry to the native doctor. They say, witch and wizards are troubling you. And the native doctor will say, if you, are, if you want solution now to be free, we have to offer sacrifice to them. Let me say this to you. You can't appease Satan. Satan is implacable. For Satan to stop fighting you, the only thing you can do to become his friend is to give him your soul. Until he gets your soul, he will not depart from you. You have to kick him in the name of the Lord. So if you are trying to cry unto somebody else, not the Lord God, you will be disappointed. Here they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he did what? And he saved them out of their distresses. He will save you today from your distresses in Jesus' name. He brought them out of darkness and in the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder. Look at another people here in verse 17. Fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted. Their soul abhorred all manner of meat and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then what happened? They cry unto whom? The Lord. You will cry today in your trouble and he saved them out of their distresses and he will save you from your distresses in Jesus name verse 20 he sent his word and did what? and he healed them that's why we preach the gospel that's why we preach the word here that's why we read the bible here because healing is in the word he sent his word and he healed them he sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from their war distractions the lord will deliver you from your distractions in jesus name say lord amen now the same psalm 119 repentance of sinners psalm 119 we read the other time let's read now verse 67 again but I, before i was afflicted i went astray now what is repentance now but now have i kept what Thy word. I'm repenting now, ready to keep your word so that affliction will be taken away from my life and I can experience the peace of God that passeth all understanding. So you see, repentance of sinners is not just a word, it's more than just raising up your hand. All those who repent in the scripture, what did they do? They cried. They called upon the name of the Lord. Romans chapter 10 verse 13 says, And it shall come to pass, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They called upon the name of the Lord. It's not just raising up your hands. They confess their sins. They call upon the name of the Lord. And in Matthew chapter 3 verse 8. Matthew chapter 3 verse 8. It says, shall bring you forth fruit meat for repentance in other words they bring fruit they bring out fruit of repentance repentance is not by mouth only you also repent by actions you show it oh we used to sing it the song i used to sing i sing it no more the places i used to go finish it i go there no more 
the things I used to do? Why? That's a great change Saints, I'm born again. That's it. That's it. Actions. Follow your repentance. In many places, raise up your hand. After raising up your hand, to go back into sins. Ah, oh, you've not repented. You've not repented. When you repent, you take steps. Somebody texted me in a message. She said she was living in fornication before. She came last Saturday. And then she had a boyfriend and they were sleeping together already. And she knew that this was sin. And what should she do now? And I sent text back to her what she could do. And she did it. And she prayed and God forgive her. That's repentance. Not somebody who is keeping the boy, keeping the concubine. She said, okay now, we are going to marry, but let's not touch one another. It's a lie. You see a sinner? You see a sinner? Not somebody who say, I'm now, I've now repented. And you see going to gambling institution, going to gambling houses, still smoking. And say, I thank God now. Since I attended that prayer meeting, that the breakfast now with Jesus Christ. I was formerly smoking five packets of cigarettes per day. Now I smoke only one packet. You are going to hell. You're a sinner. I was drinking before. I couldn't do but drink at least two bottles of beer per day. But now I only take care one bottle in two days. You are still the same person. No change has taken place. When you repent, there will be actions. Number one, you call upon the name of the Lord. Number two, you confess your sins. And number three, you bring forth food, meat. For repentance, look at it, look at it now in Acts chapter 19, verse 19. Acts 19, verse 19. Very soon we are coming to pray. Acts 19, 19. Let's read the word of God. Acts 19, 19 says, Many of them also which use curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. Can you imagine that? Those who were born again, these people, they were Juju people before. Idol worshippers. They have enchantments, they have divinations, they have all these rings and hamlets and waistbands and so on. And curious books, six and seven books of Satan. They have all these things. And they brought all of them together and said, Paul... They called the preacher and they brought everything out and they set them on fire. And the cost of what they set on fire was huge. So much. They didn't care about the money. Because they knew they must repent. Otherwise they will perish. And they will remain in captivity. You think about your money. Think about it. The evil things in your house. The juju rings you are wearing. The heart of worshiping, the concoction. You said, Ah, Pastor, you don't know how much this ring cost me. This juju ring is ring of protection. The doctor gave it to me, native doctor. I paid 20,000. I cannot leave it. Well, you remain in bondage. Remain there. These people were born again. They didn't care about the cost of what they had had before. Everything was set on fire. They destroyed the idols, destroyed the box. All those dresses you used to wear. You a girl wearing trousers and slacks everywhere. And they say, God doesn't matter. He doesn't mind. After all, in some other churches, our pastor says it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Your pastor is not the judge. Bible will judge you. You take the trouser, set it on fire. You don't even give it to a man because I won it before. You destroy it. Ah, I bought you so. It's a great amount of money. Great amount of money. More than your soul. Greater than your soul and your spirit and freedom that you are looking for. See, they set everything on fire. That's what is called the fruit meant for repentance. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Look at verse 5 and 8. Luke 19. The story of a man there, Zacchaeus, the publican. Very rich man. Rich by fraudulence. Fraudulent means rich by fraud. Rich by cheating people, rich by kidnapping, abducting people, rich, rich by smuggling. How did you get your money, Zacchaeus? You cheated people. Now look at Luke chapter 19, very important, verse 5. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, 
Zacchaeus. Make haste and come down for today. I must abide at the house. Today, Jesus is saying, make haste brothers and sisters. I must come into your heart. I must come into your life. Forget the past now. Jesus is calling afresh. Oh, don't say I have my church. Oh, Zacchaeus had his own church. Don't say I have my church. Zacchaeus was going to the synagogue. What's the problem with that? <laughs> but Jesus Christ said, Zacchaeus, past is past. You're on the way to hell, but now I've come. This is war. This is me, the Savior. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, make haste. Don't delay it. I come down for today. I must abide at thy house. And he made haste. Can you see that? I came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, say that he was going to be guest with the man that is a sinner. Even people knew that Zacchaeus was a sinner. Don't they know you were a sinner? When they see you carry men around, they say, that's not a husband. They know you. In the neighborhood, when that man comes at night, they know that that's not your husband. They know you. In the gambling, in the casino, in the pool's house, they know. Even your children know that mom is committing fornication. Because you say, this is the seed of the man. But the man is not their father. They knew. And they said, mommy is doing it. When we two grow up, we will do it. Terrible things happen in this nation. People are sinning and they're not afraid. Stealing and cheating in exams. You know everything you do. You, because you want that job, you give your body to that man. Because you want job. And you destroyed your soul. What are you going to use to, 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 to recover your soul back? And so this man and they said, he's a sinner. Jesus Christ, don't you know the person you are following? Zacchaeus of all people he is a sinner and Zacchaeus did not argue oh those who go to heaven are not those who argue <laughs> they are those who simply accept the word of God and say yes that's what he called me hear what he said in verse 8 and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord behold Lord the half of my goods I give to the poor and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation finish it I restore him for food. I'm a sinner. I will pay back. Can you hear that? I will make amends. That's restitution we talk about in this church. I will make amends. I know I've messed up. I know I've messed up. But now, since I'm still alive, Lord Jesus, just a moment, I'll make adjustment. I'll make up for it. I'll give it back. I'll pay back. I'll pay back. And by paying back now, this man will become poor, you know? He didn't, he didn't care about that. Salvation, deliverance cannot be prized. You can't calculate the freedom you are looking for in terms of money at all. And so this man did it and became born again. And Jesus Christ pronounced salvation for him. Hear what Jesus Christ says here. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. Say, Amen. This day also, salvation will come to your own house in Jesus' name. And so you repent. And when you repent, you return to the Savior, like Joah state. And number three, you renounce all sins. Renounce all sins. Number one, repent. Number two, return to the Savior, like Joah state. Number three, renounce all sins. And number four, restitute all things as far as we can go. We commence. And then number five, remain with the saints. Don't go with the sinners again. You have to break company now. Otherwise, you go back into captivity. Remain with the saints. Acts chapter 2. Verse 41. Remain with the saints. Acts chapter 2. Very soon we are going to start praying. Verse 41. Then they that God they received his word were baptized. And the same day they were added unto them. About how many souls? 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly. Those who believe they continued steadfastly. In the apostles doctrine and in fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayers they continue with the saints look at verse 47 praising God verse 46 and they continuing daily with one accord where? in the temple 
They stay with the saints. So we get born again, they go back to sinners. Can you imagine that? And when they come to the place where they are drinking joint, and the people say, ah, Hey boy, you are here again. We heard that you went to one breakfast now, you, and I heard that you are changing. And say, Well, that pastor said we should change. Am I the one who said you should change your, your Bible? God says you should change. And they, they ask him, Are you truly changed now? And he says, um, I don't really know. He's a goner. He's finished. If you stay with the saints, you can't regret of your salvation. If you continue in the temple, you don't go back to those people who will not feed you with the word of God. But those who are going to say, why are you crying? What's wrong with you? Why are you bringing back the money you've stolen? You've stolen some time ago. Why are you doing all these things? Why are you rejecting? That lady told me in the text, she said, when she told that boy off, that what she's been doing with him has been sinful and they, she wants to sh stop everything that that boy said you should not feel that way don't don't regret your actions you see don't regret your actions that's what they tell you don't regret your actions let's be going on together until land in hellfire let's be going together but you will not go to hell in the name of jesus you remain with the saints that's where your security lies. You remain for your own good. Your coming to this church doesn't affect me in any way. If you don't come, what's that to me? I'm not God. I'm not Christ. But if you come, it means a lot for your salvation and deliverance. If you continue with the saints and remain in the temple, it's for you. They can say anything they want to say about you. You know where you're going. You know where you're coming from. And by the grace of God, you will not go back to jail in Jesus' name. Amen. Repentance of sinners. Finally now, you want to pray. Resistance of sins. I've told you before, repent, return to the Savior, renounce all sins, restitute all things, remain with the sins. Let me add this too. Resist Satan. Temptations will see come. The boys will see come. The girls will see come. Satan will see come to tempt you. Resist Satan and it will flee from you. And number seven now, reproduce saints. You to tell others. Tell them about your salvation. Preach the gospel. Share Christ with them. And then they to become born again. And number three, resistance of saints. The resistance of saints. Go back again to two kings now. Before we pray, Second Kings chapter 13 again. Let's read verse 14. Very important. Second Kings 13, verse 14. Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness, whereof he died. And Joas, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, my father, the child of Israel and the horseman thereof. And Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. Say amen. amen. You are no longer a sinner. You are now a saint. That's where we come to now. That's why I call you a saint. I assumed you have repented. I assumed you are ready to continue. I assumed that you will make all amends. I also assumed that you will resist Satan. And you are already reproducing saints. You are remaining with saints. I assume that. So I call you saints. But a saint now should resist the devil now. You should resist your captivity now. You should resist your bondage now. You should now claim your victory now. Because you are now on the side of God. And so he told him here. Take bow and arrows. Weeping must stop after repentance. Say amen. Feeling sorry for yourself must stop after repentance. You know the devil likes to be entertained when you when you cry. He he enjoys that entertainment. Which is like to see you crying and sorrowing and grieving like that. But now you are a saint, you look at them face to face and say, Satan, which is a ways and listen to me. All things are passed away. I'm no longer in your captivity i'm breaking loose today i'm breaking free today say what who to do that jesus and before they say anything you bring out your arrows of deliverance and you start to shoot you start to shoot 
and you start to shoot as you are shooting and shooting and shooting you see the forces of darkness which have terrorized you before falling at your feet and you see the doors open wide for you to step out and when you step out you step into freedom you step into prosperity and all things are passed away you begin to enjoy the fullness of god and that's your experience today in jesus name and so he took bow and harrow and then the prophet in verse 16 and he said to the king of the israel put a hand upon the bow and he put his hand upon it and elisha put his hands upon the king's hands elisha joined him in the fight that's why i'm here today when you when you take the bow i won't leave you alone i'm going to put my hand on the bow with your hand and then the two of us begin to shoot together i tell you they can't resist us we are going to resist them and everything is going to change for you in jesus name and he said open the window eastward that means remove the hindrances take away the obstacles things that will not allow you to see to target the enemy properly take those things away if there's any sin to confess that's what he's saying now back to sin again open the window the window of iniquities remove the barrier of transgressions confess everything to god repent of everything open the window and then you shoot then elijah said elijah said shoot and he shot and he said the arrow of the lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from syria for thou shalt smite the syrians in Africa, thou have consumed them and he said take the arrows and it took him it's good to obey when i said stand up to pray you simply obey and he took them and he said unto the king of israel smite upon the ground and he spoke thrice and stayed why should you stop praying until your victory is concluded until your victory is consummated you know some people you pray for them by the grace of god god answered their prayers and they became pregnant they've been barren before and once they became pregnant they stopped praying and the enemy was somewhere watching them waiting for a crack in the wall in the fourth month now a crack appeared and then the enemy came in and the pregnancy came down miscarriage and they said pastor pregnancy miscarried oh, it's you you stop shooting You keep on shooting and shooting and you shoot and shoot you're always at war with the enemy you don't allow a crack in your life because the kingdom suffered what violence and the violent take it by force when you wake up in the morning you pray you worship the lord you praise the lord you bring your petitions to him and you look around and fire some shots before you sleep at night out so you look around again after praying or reading your bible you look around again any witch or wizard or something there that's trying to raise up their hungry heads and fire some shots don't finish your day without firing some shots that's how to remain victorious don't forget that you're on the battlefield and the enemy that was suppressing you before is looking for a way to repossess you it's you that will say no you will not get me and he will not get you in jesus name yeah. this king shot only three times and only three times he defeated the enemy he will have shot several times will have consumed the enemy now where are your arrows today where are your bows we don't need physical arrows in the whole testament the picture we find there the shadow we find there in the new testament we have the substance the reality the arrow today of deliverance is the name of jesus it's the blood of jesus the name of jesus the blood of jesus spell arrow for me a r o a 
R R O W. How many letters? Eh? Spell Jesus. J E S U S. How many letters? Spell blood. B L O O D. How many letters? Your arrow is the name and the blood of Jesus. What we are to shoot today is the name of the Lord. What we are to shoot at the enemy today is the blood of the Lamb. And when you shoot the blood of the Lamb and the name of the Lord and you pray, your gates of captivity will be broken. You simply come out, you see your chains of sickness is snapping. And I tell you today, there will be cracking of bones when we begin to pray. Some bones that have been dislocated will be relocated. When we begin to pray, some destinies that are already wounded will be readjusted and remodeled and restored. When we begin to pray, changes will begin to happen. And it, these changes are not, they are not just you, something you will wait for 10 years. Changes instant. Then you know that the Lord God has come to save you through Jesus Christ is only beginning so all you need to do is to come back to him carrying the name of Jesus in your mouth and the blood of Jesus Christ shout in the blood in your mouth say blood shout blood that's there's no witch or wizard that hears the shout of the blood that we stay that they can't stay because to them, to you is blood, to them is fire. And when you call the name of Jesus Christ and you are not a sinner, sin is gone, you are holy, you have changed your lifestyle, you are following God. Who can see me preaching here now? I'm not afraid. Any witch, witches know where they go. Wizards know where they go. They don't come to those who know the name of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus. Two things. My arrow. When I shoot the arrow. Things will change. Forces of darkness will bow. And there will be liberty for all of you. In the name of Jesus. This is the arrow. Of deliverance. The name of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus Christ. And before you can shoot. You weep. Like Joash wept. You also repent. Like Joash repent. And when you begin to shoot. Now that you are a saint. You shoot and shoot. And shoot on. Until your victory is consummated. And concluded. And you can say. Yes I'm free. Yes I have it. Yes it's mine. At any future challenge that comes your way, what do you do again? You take your bow, you take your arrow, you take the blood, you take the name of Jesus Christ. And since you are holy, you shoot again, and shoot again, and shoot again, and shoot again. Who will shoot today? Uniben, students, are you here? You ready to shoot now? DLSO, are you here? You ready to shoot now? And the sisters, where are you? Are you ready to shoot now? You visit us, will you also shoot now? And those outside, are you hearing me? Will you shoot now? Let all of us rise up now on our feet and begin to shoot and begin to pray. I want you to pray and tell the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ, I resist Satan. I resist any captivity. I resist the power of the devil working against my existence. I resist them in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything holding me down, anything chaining me down, anything limiting my movement, limiting my progress, resist them in the name of Jesus Christ. All the forces of hell, all the power of darkness howling around me, stalking me, resist it today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Are you praying there? Is anybody praying? Resisting. Resisting the spirits of failure. Resisting the spirit of barrenness. Resisting the spirit of sicknesses of infirmities. Resisting the spirit of infirmities. Resist in the name of Jesus. 
every power of darkness, every force of Satan, resist them in the name of Jesus. I receive the power of darkness. I receive the power of the devil. I receive mommy water spirit. I receive mommy water spirit. I see the serpentine spirit. I bind them, set them on fire, shoot in the name of Jesus by the blood of the Lamb. In the name of Jesus, everything working against my progress, working against my spirituality, working against my salvation, working against my existence on earth, working against my existence in the kingdom, working against my holiness. Power of darkness, the devil and evil spirits. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist the devil. Destroy his power. This is your time. To resist the hallows of deliverance, the name of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Ghost, resist the spirit of failure, resist the works of darkness in your life, the works of darkness, the works of flesh. Break all chains, sinfulness. Fornication. I resist you adultery, gambling, smoking. All the forces of darkness. All the power of the evil one. Working in your life. Working against your soul. Working against your spirit. Resist in the name of Jesus Christ. Bind them. The arrows of deliverance. The arrow of deliverance. The name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ. In the hands of somebody who is holy. Are weapons that nobody can conquer. Resist. The resistance of saints, saints of God are resisting right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Shout the Lord. Quietness everywhere. We are seeking to pray. But close your eyes and listen to me. You can't resist Satan if you are in Satan's camp. You must repent. Now, if you know that you want to repent of all sins and give your life to Jesus afresh, don't worry when I have done so in some other churches. You know that you are not free from sin. Don't deceive yourself. I've told you before in point number one of my message. Your prayers will be an abomination to your maker. You have no hope at all. The first offer from God to you is the offer of forgiveness and salvation. If you know you want to confess and surrender your life to Christ, when all eyes are closed, can you raise up your hand wherever you are? So I can pray for you. Oh God bless you. God bless those who raise up their hands. Those who are not deceiving themselves. Oh God bless you. Some people are sincere. They don't want to deceive themselves. And hide under the cloak of religion. And hide that under the cloak of church. But they know that they must be saved. They know without salvation. They are doomed forever. They are damned. And there is no hope of freedom for them. Can you raise up your hands wherever you are? Oh, God bless you. As you raise up your hands now, just be praying.
just to pray and say, Oh God, I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me and you know, wash me and cleanse me in the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. I'm sorry I've sinned against you. Fornication, adultery, lying, fighting, gambling, abortion, masturbation, masturbation. Oh, backbiting, hypocrisy, hatred, going to native doctor, witchcraft, witchcraft, idolatry, adultery, all kinds of sin. Lord, I don't even know how many sins I've committed. Close your eyes and pray before you perish. And so you receive the pardon of the Lord right now. That's the first offer for you. And begin to pray and confess in your sins now. I'm sorry for my sins, Lord. I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. If you are going to judge me, I can't stand. If you are going to judge me, I can't stand. That's why I'm in captivity. I've sinned against you. Fornication, uh, adultery, stealing lie, hypocrisy, idol worship, native doctor. Lord, my sins are many. I'm sorry today. Forgive me. Wash me. Cleanse me. Pardon me, O Lord. I give my life to Jesus Christ as from today. Are you praying like that? Are you praying like that outside, anywhere you are? Just be praying. Are you saints of God inside and outside? Pray also. Tell the Lord God to cleanse you. I know you are holy. I know what you can you can be more cleansed to. That's no end to cleansing. That's no end to sanctification. Yes, yes. We can grow in holiness. Sanctification is once for all. But holiness continues. Holiness is continuous and is gradable. We can grow in grace. We can grow in holiness. We can grow in righteousness. Yes, we can grow in perfection. Sanctification is once for all, but the product of sanctification is a continuous exercise. Pray that God will cleanse you more. God will give you more grace to remain a saint, not to fall into sin. And if you know you're falling into sin, why don't you confess and make your way straight? Why don't you confess to God? Even though they call me in great name in the church, though they call me mighty fellow in the church, and they think I'm somebody reputable and kind and holy, but I know myself. Tell the Lord what to know about yourself. And tell him how you messed up in the secret. Tell him how you messed up in the dark. Tell him that you are coming back. He should forgive you and wash you and cleanse you and deliver you today. All saints outside and inside, pray unto the Lord. Pray with all your heart. Pray with all your soul. Pray with all your mind. Let all those who are sitting down just stand up now. You are before the King of Kings. Stand up. The Lord will give you strength to stand up. Don't say I'm weak. You will not be weak. Don't say I'm not, I'm not well. You are well already. You just pray for cleansing. Pray for strengthening. Pray for more grace. And those of you who are confessing your sins, confess, confess quickly, quickly to the Lord. Promise Him I will not fall, I will not go into sin anymore. Promise Him that He will help you to stand firm. In Jesus' name we pray. Say it louder, Amen. Now, those who raise up their hands before, raise it up again now. Raise your hands up again now so I can pray for you. You are the first set of people. To receive the first touch of God. And I tell you, these prayers will be answered by God immediately. The last amen is said in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, raise up your hand so we can pray together. Almighty Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you so much for this opportunity you gave to me today to preach your word and to minister unto your people. See the hands of all these brothers and sisters. Now have confessed their sins and they are saying they are surrendering their lives unto Christ. According to your word, you said, Whosoever sins will remit shall be remitted. I pray, Lord, that you forgive them their sins as many as they are in Jesus' name. Amen. Holy Father, I pray that thou will wash their sins away with the blood of the Lamb in Jesus' name. Amen. As who wrote my own name in the book of life, I pray you write their own names also in the book of life in Jesus' name. 
I pray, Lord, you give them the grace. Give them your spirit to help them to give them the strength to refuse to reject all the offers of saints in Jesus name Lord I pray that the Holy Spirit will descend into their hearts and descend into their souls and descend into their spirits my God I pray that your spirit will lead them on on the path of righteousness as from today to the end of their lives in Jesus name as they have offered themselves unto you I pray oh Lord accept them just as they are wash them and cleanse them take them into your kingdom establish them in your kingdom make them part of the fellowship of your people and Lord I pray they will not go back again into sin in Jesus name Lord I pray that your eyes will watch over them all thank you because of the victory you've given to us today in Jesus name we pray people of God shout the louder amen can you put your hands together for Jesus Christ amen put your hands together for Jesus Christ amen now it's miracle time say miracles you didn't say it well Say it again. Now, how did Joash get his own miracles? By what? Say it again. By shooting. S H O O T. Shoot. Jesus. Five letters. Arrow. Five letters. Blood. Five letters. Shoot. Five letters. Put your hands together for Jesus. That's a miracle. That's a miracle for you. Amen. That's why you have to close your eyes now. How many of you will shoot now? You get your bow and your arrow. And your arrow is the blood. And the name of Jesus Christ. And then we begin. If anybody goes home now, he's a loser. He say what? If you, if you allow Satan to tempt you and ask you to go through the gate or go to the toilet, no toileting now. You want to collect it and you are collecting it now in Jesus' name. Now you close your eyes and pray. Maybe I should help you to do it. You will pray. You will say, in the name of Jesus. Say it well, I want to help you. Say it again. Anything troubling my life. Any power of darkness in my life. Any opposition of the devil. Any agent of darkness. Working against me. Working against my progress. Working against my soul. Working against my spirit. Working against my life. Now. I shoot you all. I shoot you all. I shoot you down. Raise up your voices and begin to shoot now. The powers of darkness. Shoot in the name of Jesus. The spirit of failure. Shoot in the name of Jesus. The spirit of infirmities. Shoot in the name of Jesus. The spirit troubling your marriage. Shoot in the name of Jesus. The spirit of backsliding. Shoot in the name of Jesus. The spirit of worldliness. Shoot in the name of Jesus. The spirit of failure. The spirit of failure. The spirit of frustration. The spirit of confusion. Confusion. Shoot in the name of Jesus. 
the spirit of stagnation stagnation marital yoke shoot in the name of Jesus with the blood of Jesus with the name of Jesus the evil forces in your life are you shooting outside are you shooting inside are you shooting shoot shoot don't shoot three times the arrows of deliverance don't shoot three times continue to shoot take the arrows shoot shoot your followers shoot your sickness shoot every stagnation spirit shoot the spirit of oppression shoot the spirit of masturbation shoot the spirit of fornication adultery shoot witches and wizards shoot any spell in your life any spell in your life shoot shoot in the name of Jesus Christ whatever is tying you down whatever is not allowing you to move forward all the wreckers destiny destroyers shoot destiny wreckers shoot destroyers of destiny destroyers of ministries destroyers of families evil spirits satan demons devils shoot in the name of jesus in my name they shall cast out devils shoot in my name they shall cast out devils shoot outside are you shooting inside here are you shooting at all shoot i say shoot in the name of the lord shoot in the name of the lord don't open your eyes don't be tired don't be tired whatever is worrying your life whatever is worrying your family whatever is destroying your marriage whatever is destroying your career destroying your business destroying your ministries i'm sorry for you if you are praying a silent prayer this is not the time for silent praying it's a time to shoot there's a prayer of war we are not spraying silent prayer we are shooting forces of darkness destiny destroyers destroying your home shoot destroying your children shoot destroying your marriage shoot destroy your progress shoot destroy your ministry shoot infirmities shoot familiar spirits shoot spirits of witchcraft shoot in the name of jesus shoot them destroy the destroyer destroy the destroyer in the name of jesus terrorize the terrorist bring them down bring them down with the blood of the lamb bring them down cast them out out of your life don't pray silently shoot don't be weak 
Don't let the devil weaken you. It's a liar. Get the strength of the Holy Ghost. Get the strength of God. Get the spirit of supplication. My brothers, my sisters, shoot them. Shoot. Identify your problems and shoot. Those of you outside, shoot. Identify the problem and shoot them. Set yourself free in the name of the Lord. Free your children. Free your marriage. Free your family. Free your ministries. Free your destiny. Free your career. Free your business. Get your healing. Shoot. Shoot, I say. In the name of the Lord. Shoot. I tell you, son, I pray. If you are tired, that's enemy strategy. Fight. Take the bow. Take the arrow. Shoot in the name of Jesus. Bring them down. The spirit of sin. The demons of masturbation in your life. Cast him out. You are a child of God. You have repented. You are changed. Cast him out. Any spirit of iniquity hanging out there, hanging around you. Now that you are a child of God, cast him out in the name of Jesus. Any demon troubling your life, troubling your family, challenging your destiny, saying you will not succeed, saying you will fail, saying you will repeat the class, saying you will become a slave. God said, No, you will be a head and not a tail. Shoot! Shoot! Identify your problem and shoot! Identify the sickness and shoot it in the name of Jesus Christ. You are a child of God. You are a saint. The wicked cannot touch you. The wicked must not touch you. How has he come? Because you slept. But now you are awoken. But now you are alive. Tell the enemy to pack his load and go. All the tears in your life begin to uproot. Shoot. Shoot in the name of Jesus. You are not sleeping anymore. You are walking. You are alive. You are sensitive. You are conscious now. Shoot! Shoot! The power of God is here. The Holy Spirit is here. In the name of the Lord, shoot! Ah, uh, some people are shooting and they are winning. The demons are falling. The evil spirits are packing their loads. They are running away. They are fleeing from their secret places. Fleeing out of your hearts. Flee out of your bodies. Flee out of your life. You are releasing your destinies now. 
The destroyers are being destroyed. Yes. Shoot. Shoot in the name of Jesus. Shoot in the name of Jesus. Shoot. Whatever is troubling your life, forces of darkness, the spirit of iniquity, the spirit of lust, reject, resist, shoot out of your life. The spirit of iniquity is unlost, lost in outer man. Last night that we may shoot out of your life the spirit of poverty poverty nothing nothing to show for all your labors shoot you are a saint reject it resist it Shoot! In Jesus' name we pray! Say loud You will still pray. You are going to pray. Let me help you again. You say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Any barrier erected on my way. Any barrier. Activity erected on my way, any chain around my life, around my destiny, around my family, around my ministry today, today, break in the name of Jesus, break in the name of Jesus. Break in the name of Jesus. Raise up your voices and pray. Any chain.